The following video will present solutions to the QTE Year 12 Mathematical Methods Sample Assessment 2020 Paper 2 Technology Active Questions 15 to 17. The technology utilised is the Casio FX CG50AU graphics calculator running operating system 3.2. Unless specified otherwise, default settings have been used. Question 15. In part A of this question, we are asked to use the normal approximation to the binomial distribution with proportion p equals 0.64 and sample size 100. The normal approximation to this distribution will have a mean of mu equals 0.64 and a standard deviation equal to the square root of p by 1 take p over n. This we can evaluate on our CG50. So sigma equals 0 0.048. Using these parameters, the probability that p hat is greater than 70% can be calculated using the distribution menu found in the statistics app. Select the normal distribution by pressing F1 and perform a cumulative calculation by pressing F2. Set data to variable by pressing F2. Enter the lower value as 0.7. The upper bound in a normal distribution calculation such as this is usually a very large number, playing the role of infinity for the purpose of the calculation. In this case, a value of 1, i.e. 100%, also makes sense as an upper bound. As both values are a long way past the mean in terms of sigmas, the choice will not affect the answer we obtain. Enter the standard deviation and mean as previously calculated. Pressing Execute calculates the probability required. Part B. The margin for error for an approximate 95% confidence interval for P, based on the confidence interval formula found on page 4 of the formula sheet, is 1.96 by the root of P by 1 take P over N. If a margin for error of 4% is required, then we have an equation that we can solve for n, the required sample size. n can be found from this equation by first dividing by 1.96 and squaring both sides of the equation. Now inverting both fractions and multiplying by p by 1 take p. With this rearrangement done, we can calculate the value of n. As n represents a sample size, an integer value is required to answer the question. The equation we wrote down in n can be solved in other ways. The solver in the equation app of the CG50 is one such a way. To do so, first open equation from the main menu and select solver by pressing F3. Start by entering the equation to be solved. As any positive value of n is feasible as a solution, adjusting the lower bound to be zero will help obtain the result we require. Press F6 to solve. Part C. The effect of halving the margin of error can be determined by editing and re-executing the method used to find n. If the solver was used, then we need to repeat the calculation by pressing F1. Now arrow up and left, deleting the 0.04 and changing it to 0.02. Pressing F6 will find our new value of n. This new value of n 
is four times greater than the one found in part B. This result is to be expected given the square slash square root structure of the confidence interval formula and the fact that 2 squared is 4. Part D. This part of the question involves modelling a sample size 25 with a binomial distribution with n equals 25 and p equals 0.64. The probability that p hat, the sample proportion, equals p is equivalent to the probability that the sample count of x equals 25 times 0 0.64. And this is equal to 16. The probability that x equals 16 can be calculated using the distribution menu found in the statistics app of the CG50. Select the binomial distribution by pressing F5 and perform a point calculation by pressing F1. With data set as variable, enter x as 16, enter the number of trials n as 25 and p as 0 0.64. Press execute to find the probability required. Question 16. To answer this question, a diagram needs to be drawn to capture the information provided. Starting at radar station R and heading on a bearing of 41 degrees true for a distance of 65 kilometres, we can locate boat A. Next, we can locate boat B on a bearing of 295 degrees true at a distance of 53 kilometres. As there are 360 degrees in a circle, we can deduce that the angle counterclockwise from north to the line RB is 65 degrees. And so the angle ARB is 41 plus 65, which is 106 degrees. With that diagram completed, we can calculate the length AB, which we will need to find the time taken to travel this distance. We can find this length using the cosine rule. The cosine rule applied to this triangle looks like this. From this, length AB can be calculated. My calculation is to be performed using degrees, so I will need to change my angle measure from radians, as it is currently set, to degrees via the setup. This gives a length AB equals 94.515 kilometres. If velocity equals distance over time, then time equals distance over velocity. Hence, the time taken for the ship to travel from B to A is 94.515 kilometres divided by 30 kilometres per hour, which equals 3.15 hours. Question 17. This set of rate data can be modelled by a quadratic function. The equation of this quadratic model can be found using the statistics mode of the CG50AU. To do this, open the app and enter the data as list1 and list2. Press execute between data values. Use the arrow pad to move from list1 to list2. One way to calculate a regression model is to first draw a scatter plot of the data. Pressing F1 for graph options and then F1 for graph 1 will draw the scatter plot required as this is the default graph option. Press F1 and then F4 to fit a quadratic regression model to this data. The coefficients of the quadratic model of best fit are shown. From the R squared of 1 and the mean squared error of 0 this quadratic fits the data perfectly.
To store this equation, press F5 and press Execute. With the model obtained and stored, we can use it to find the total amount of pollution over the 30-day period. As our model P of T is a model for rate, the total amount of pollution over the 30 days is equal to the area under this rate curve from t equals 0 to t equals 30. It is also equal to the definite integral from 0 to 30 of P of T dt. The area under the curve can be found using the graph app of the CG50. We will need to press F1 to select the quadratic function that we stored there previously. Pressing F6 will draw this function on the view window that was set by the statistics app. The area under the curve can be found using the G-Solve menu. Press F5. Press F6 for more options. Press F3 for integral options and press F1. Enter the lower bound by entering 0 and pressing Execute. Enter the upper bound of 30 and then press Execute to complete the calculation. Alternatively, we could use the Run Matrix app of our CG50 to calculate the definite interval required without drawing a graph. The definite integral command is found via the Math menu. Press F6 for more options, and then F1 to enter the definite integral template. The function can be called up via its name, Y1. The Y required for this name is the graphing variable Y so it is found via pressing VARS, or the Variables key. Select Graph as it is a graphing variable. Press F1 to enter Y, followed by the number 1. Arrow right to move to the next field in the template, which is the lower bound of 0. Arrow right again to move to the last field, the upper bound of 30. Press Execute to evaluate this definite integral. For a decimal value, press the S to D key.